Welcome, radiant viewers, to Science and Spirituality. Did you know that even when you think you are in darkness, you are actually swimming in an ocean of light? On today's episode, we take a scientific venture into that subatomic world of light as we visit the International Institute of Biophysics in Neuss, Germany. Through our visit, we will gain a better understanding of the branch of science called biophotonics and show you some of its exciting potential applications in the field of health and well-being. For this series, Supreme Master Television had the wonderful and unique opportunity to visit with Professor Fritz Albert Popp, founder of the International Institute of Biophysics. He has spent the last 30 years researching how the cells of the body communicate via light photons. Professor Popp has said, we know today that man is essentially a being of light. We begin by joining Professor Popp in the laboratory for a concrete demonstration of how living organisms contain tiny light particles or biophotons. Professor Popp, welcome to Supreme Master Television and thank you very much for having us over in your institute. You are welcome. Inside is very dark when I close the door and the plant has stored the light from outside. And if I um, put on the device, then you can see the light which is now emitted from the plant on the screen. Nothing connected to the plant. Nothing connected to the plant. It's just the plant itself. The light, what the plant has stored from outside, and it's now emitting the light. And you see the intensity is now decreasing. It's going down. And we watch that increasing intensity and with other um, devices we have a better solution of the intensity. Here you see the plant is not here and you also see the flickering of the photons that's from the background. With other devices we have a better background solution. Um, and now you don't see much more here. And we have the um, possibility to illuminate the plant again. I will do that now. Now we are illuminating it. And if I now switch on, the plant has also stored the light. But it doesn't have anything to do with chlorophyll, right? No, it uh, doesn't have to do with that. That's the biophotons. Every biological and non-biological system can store a bit of light. If you wait it long enough, it's, there will be still light. Yes, yes. So the light is always there. And you can detect it? We can detect it. We have some photomultipliers <laughs> that are much more sensitive than this camera, because this plant is emitting much of light. Maybe we should explain a little bit what photon is, because uh, it's yeah. an elementary particle of light, yeah. right? Yeah. So when yeah. you say that there are only a yeah. few photons, it's a very, very low intensity of light. Very low intensity. It corresponds to a candle at a distance of about 20 kilometers. So they are really single units of an electromagnetic field. Photons are events, are processes, where energy is taken up by the multiplier or by a detector from an external electromagnetic field. Can you please share with us what they actually are, how do they work, and where are they coming from? The biophotons are photons coming out from living systems. Therefore, we say not bioluminescence, but we say biophotons because they are so weak that you can count single photons. And the best is to tell you at an example what they do and why they are important. We have in every cell, we have about 100,000 chemical reactions per second. If I say 21, 22, in every of your cells there happened 100,000 chemical reactions. And nobody can tell you who is uh, responsible for that chemical reaction takes place just at the right time and at, on the right position. And if I tell you there are photons which are responsible for that. 
because a chemical reaction can only happen if the molecule which is reacting is excited by a photon. So the photon is necessary to stimulate a molecule to a chemical reactions. So any, any alive tissue, any alive cells produce photons, produces light. We are swimming in an ocean of light. It is very impossible to uh, get a complete darkness. You have always photons. Some people say it's not surprising that in the cells you have also photons. But it is surprising because of the following. Not the intensity of the photons are important, but they have a very high degree of coherence. Coherence is an important aspect of biophotons. It refers to the ability of a wave, and light comes as waves, to exhibit what is known as interference. Interference, when it refers to light waves, means that two or more waves can be added to result in a new wave pattern. I would say they have a very high degree of order, extremely high degree of order. This was shown not long ago by a, a group of chemists at the Berkeley, in Berkeley in California. They showed that by photosynthesis, where the photo, photons are used for getting energy, the coherence is extremely high. So coherence means that the photons can be superposed, that the a message which is submitted by the photons gets very, very clear. For instance, when we speak together, it may be the lower the noise is, the more silent we are, the better we understand each other. So actually this may, is probably a very important because why biophotons actually are so special if they are everywhere? Uh, for example, uh, what uh, does distinct them from a heat, uh, which is also electromagnetic radiation and can be radiated from all living organisms? Yes, heat is uh, the waste of electromagnetic fields. But photons, biophotons, are very distinct signals. Heat has a very low degree of coherence. Noise. But if these photons have a de high degree of coherence, they can work as submitters of information. The lower the noise is, the lower the intensity is, the better is the chance that you can submit the information with, with a very high efficiency. For instance, not long ago, American physicists and chemists showed that during the photosynthesis, the photons which are coming from the sun are taken up with an extraordinary high degree of coherence, which allows them that only a few percent are transmitted into heat. They have a very high efficiency. And the same happens when you transmit information. You have to have a very high efficiency in order to have a clean understanding of what happens. So let's get into it more deeply. Actually, um, how can biophotons send encoded message or, or, or that information communicating between biological cells? And uh, has this message to be delivered really with photons, with speed of light? Yes, uh, but uh, as I told, the biological system has a much higher capacity of doing that, that we can do it technically. For instance, the coherence time of the best laser is about a tenth of a second. But the coherence time of biological system is at least in the order of days or even weeks. Amazing. So you have a very, very high degree of coherence. And this allows the biological system to communicate with the highest possible clearness which is able. The relay of information occurs so rapidly it can only be possible at the speed of light. Any other means of information transmission, including biomolecules, chemical messengers, and so forth, would be too slow to guarantee the integrity of the organism. Dr. Pop believes that the simple calculation shows that light, 
or some electromagnetic action operating at the speed of light must be involved in the highly organized processes of living organisms. So, for instance, these hundred thousand reactions which happen in one cell per second, they are controlled, they are regulated by photons. And then it has to be very, uh, very accurate at what time and what place is a photon uh, transmitted. And the information which we call about is uh, created by the field, by the electromagnetic field behind. And this field uh, uh, is able to produce a pattern. And always, if you have a spatial dynamical pattern, so it's not only a pattern in the, in the locality, it is also a pattern in the time. This spatial dynamical pattern provides the information of a cell. And it tells a cell what it has to do at what time and what place. So basically the predictability of the pattern and the stability of the pattern is the signature of coherence of the exactly. And uh, this 20 few thousand of reaction requires speed of light? Yes. It is important. For instance, such a reactance. reaction happens in the following way. The molecule takes up the photon. This takes a nanosecond. And after this nanosecond, the photon is not thermalized, it, is not, it doesn't produce heat, it is not transferred into heat, but it is given back to the field and is available for the next reaction. So you, 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 don't, you don't need 100,000 photons in order to trigger these reactions. With one photon, one which is, you, 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 can, you can trigger 100,000 or just an autocatalytical messenger for the reactions which happen. Thank you for watching.